Hello everyone, this is Bob and Threadbear, and welcome back to Bioshock Infinite. Oh good. Finally opened. Looks like we're in menswear up here. Why would they put a pair in a box? Oh, it looks like we're actually above where we started. Not that many floors above either. Short circuited. Probably be able to pop it open with it. A jolt of shock jockey? You familiar with shock jockey? More than you could know. Well, let's look around. Maybe there's a store ain't been ransacked by splicers yet. I wonder if that's a deliberate joke. No, because the whole shock jockey episode was just so annoyingly long. <laughs> the answer is that yeah, she's familiar with shock jockey out of all of the uh, all of the special abilities. That was the biggest pain in the ass to find. Oh, hey, Troiska dolls. Odd thing to just sort of find in a corner, but. Okay. Fred, 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 Fred. I'm not trying to sell you insurance. I'm not in the insurance business, no. Not at all. I am in the peace of mind business. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna feel less bad about doing this one. Yeah, instant kill. Man, it was completely quiet. So nobody else around here has noticed. You have a friend? I thought you were my friend! Yeah, unfortunately, that guy just happened to spot me. Yeah, kill streaks really aren't that useful when you're, uh,. Not encountering that many people. Yeah, I've been over there. I don't know why I was going back. Ah, damn it. One lockpick short. I'll be back for you, don't you worry about that. Hmm. Check out. Odd for it to be in a little corner like, oh, hello there. Hmm. This seems like the best way to get rid of those turrets. Hey, I nailed it in one shot. <laughs> no need for lingering damage or anything. Hey, wait a second. Why would there be a checkout counter in one corner when we've found cash registers pretty much everywhere? something I didn't really mention earlier is that women became the uh, primary target of department stores pretty much immediately. Like very shortly. Ooh, sounds like someone got hit. It's huh. a weird mask you got there, buddy. My own home! My own home! And this is me realizing that, you know... Ow. I will not get to... 
They will not automatically kill themselves once they pop out of possession. But now, as I was saying, like, pretty much immediately after department stores became a thing, women became the, the target demographic for department stores. Ah, there we go. That's what I needed. Hmm. Mostly empty displays. It's a shame. Anyway, you saw there was a, a code lock. I don't have the code for that lock. But I get the feeling that if I run back to that lockpick door, now that I have enough, it's locked. I'll see what I can do. I just might get lucky. Done. Ooh, another lockpick. in a goddamn bottle. Hoping one will get through and someone will save me. If you get this, send help. I'm holed up in the shoe storeroom. The code's 0928. Oh, hey, that's new. I don't remember seeing you before. Oh. I'm gonna be honest, that one got me. Just what the doctor ordered. I mean, I reacted in time, but uh, she still got me. I need a lock picked. Oh, this won't take long at all. There. Oh, hello. You look more useful. Damn it. Yeah. that code again. Yeah, that was pretty easy. Of course, there's a turret just around the corner there, and well, that guy. Oh man, you were supposed to go after the turret. Come on. Over here. Come on, I am literally standing behind the turret. Take it down. Oh god damn it! You should be ashamed! It's not supposed to turn around like that. The hell. Okay, so why is the music not stopping? Oh what the hell? Jesus, how many of you people are there? Come on then, round the corner. And the music still hasn't stopped. 
Are there more of them coming? Apparently there are. Take that. Alright, music has finally stopped and... Yeah, that's the guy who's been sending the messages. Did not go well for him. Heartless. That's what this town is. All my audio diaries begging for rescue came back on red. Marked, return to sender, insufficient postage. Well, you're in a department store work. How, how could you not find enough postage down here? I mean, yeah, I, I'm just saying. Besides, does Rapture not have a COD policy? Or, you know, the guy who accepts the, uh, the mail pays the charges? I mean, th that system exists for exactly this circumstance. I don't see why they would have a problem with it, because, you know, someone is still paying for goods and services here. Yeah. I think they got them all. So... Good. Good. That actually gets me Eve. Anyway, that was pretty much pointless, aside from the upgrades and such, because where we really need to go is right up here. Ah, crap. Oh, oh, son of a bitch, where are you all coming from? That's it. I'm delegating. Yeah, position is really pretty broken for this game. So. Let's see what upgrades I can buy. Bronco, Winter, and Shock Chucky. Oh yeah, definitely on some shock chain. That doesn't sound too useful though. But winter mod uh, explosion, that it sounds like that would make that more effective too. Oh, whoops. Ice rink back that way. But what else do we have up here? Looks like the plasma department is back that way. I'm sure we'd find something useful there. Locked. Elizabeth? <sighs> Child's play. All done. I'm pretty sure this whole sequence here is also technically optional. Not too surprising, but all of the bottles have been used because this is exactly where they would go to find them. Oh! oh. That was more effective than I thought it would be. And you can help me instead of that. In fact, I'll just wait back here until I find out who wins. Okay, that's uh, 
possession running out. Return to obscurity. So you'll do. You'll be glad you hung it. That sounds like they killed him. Well, luckily there was just the one guy left. So we're doing alright. Interesting, like they've they've got these huge displays for like each individual plasmid type. Oh, hello. I guess this was the Bucking Bronco display. Could you take a look at this lock? That won't take this. You know what? Wouldn't the objectivist libertarian paradise really be against possession just as a thing? Oh, you're not gonna outlier me on this one, Ryan. You knowingly promoted Old Man Winter with the implication it produced ice, not dry ice. The ice sculpture we commissioned for this year's gala at the Cashmere stands where we left it a month later. All 2,500 pounds of it. And who's still footing the room rental? Oh, not you, you son of a bitch. See, this is what I was talking about earlier. Where the guy used the, the winter plasmid to put, you know glasses and also how is this not taken yet is this supposed to be some sort of shrine or something is that why it's been left there i don't get it why did ryan lock up all of fontaine's followers in a department store he needed somewhere to put fontaine's button why not shut down the competition in the bargain? But I thought Andrew Ryan was all about free markets and open competition. All those ideas lose their luster when the quarterly earnings come in and you find the other guys eating your lunch. Either way, Fontaine's dead. But no, as I was saying, like you remember the one waiter putting ice into the dude's glass. It turns out that ice was dry ice. It's freezing in here. Something tells me all that cold isn't just coming from the ice rink. I may be a little rusty on my chemistry, but I'm pretty sure... It's not such a good idea. Frank Fontaine called me in the other day. Me, Ray Lord. Says trouble's coming and he's passing out special plasmids to all his best guys. I mean, it's an honor, but man, I started getting these shingles all over, skin's discolored, like when a guy's about to lose a limb, you know, and I can't seem to pile on enough clothes. I hate to ask, but is this happening to everybody? Yes, please. Temporary immunity for jumping onto a skyline again? Yes, please. Oh, hello. But yeah, apparently that guy we just heard is one of the, um... Yeah, one of the old man winter type, uh... Junkies, or whatever they called them, but oh, oh dear. There's a lockpick. Well, hopefully, we'll get some ammo for this. Not much yet. Alright, what have we got here? 
sip unless I say so. You got it? Anyone comes near that bottle without permission is a dead man. Splicer, that's right. So yeah, that audio log we just heard, that was that was the splicer. And apparently that's what happens when someone gets a bad reaction, gets addicted to uh old man winter's plasmid. There's that shield coming into play, that's why I'm hopping up and down like the Mario brother here. Yeah, and there goes the splicer. That was actually pretty effective. Didn't even shoot a gun. There's the plasmid video just going along the wall here. Mr. DeWitt, the plasmid? Have you forgotten what we came for? No, I'm just looting things first. That's the way I do things. Because loot has this tendency to disappear once you reach the uh, story marker. I mean, yeah, it depends on the game, but uh, that's better safe than sorry. Also, Up that cabinet. this is why I said that uh, it's not too bad that you only carry, that you can't carry as much ammo anymore. Locked. Elizabeth. <sighs> Child's play. Because the game allo allows you to hold on to weapons now. Damn it, that son of a bitch drank every last bottle of Old Man Winter. I think I can help. Was that? It's a uh, new plasmid. Let's me, let's me bring in things that might exist, but uh, don't. I'm not sure I understand. What's it called? Tear. Where'd you find that? You don't expect a girl to share all her secrets, do you, Mr. Dewitt? Freeze your enemies. Shatter them into a thousand pieces. I wonder why this one got the video, but none of the others did. I mean, I get it, we've seen them before, but still. But yeah, I definitely approve of the idea that we can carry multiple weapons now. Also, that guy back there. Why kill him when I don't have to? Think you can pick this? On it. It's done. Absinthe. Hmm. All right. I know you're the client and all, but I've gone about far enough without a few answers. My purpose here is none of your concern. Consider me a means to an end. And why do I get the feeling I'm being set up? I told you I'm in collections. An account is in arrears. My clients simply want to see matters set to right. Don't make any sense, that's all. If you don't like the arrangement, the bathosphere's back that way. Taking its sweet time. Oh, hey. Nice effect with the ceiling there. A samurai. Okay. Hmm. Like, literally, just a samurai. Some crazy asshole in period Japanese armor, wielding a katana. That is seriously a guy that is taking on like half of the uh, splicers at this point. Looks like they got him, though. Oh, 
You took a lot of hits, didn't you? But yeah, I'd say the one real problem with the fact that you get more than two guns is that the game doesn't really tell you that the way that you access it is by pressing and holding E. Go ahead. On it. I mean, at least in the case of, uh, you know, in the case of keyboard controls. But yeah, we've got our old man winner. We've got our shock jockey. Which means that we can do something about this. Oh, hello. Didn't see you get on. And now we can access this. Hmm. I don't know. I've been relying on plasmids an awful lot. And of course, before we go forward, there is that other direction we can go. sort of popped out there. It's a little odd. <laughs> Alright, but yes, we have this other bridge we could create. Alright, let's see what a machine gun can do for us. Turret, I suppose. Apparently the answer is not much, because they're all around the corner there. Oh! It's a rocket turret. Didn't help much, but that was... interesting. And that, by the way, was me using the carbine for the first time at this point. And so, yes, it's, uh... Unfortunately, it only has the three burst round option. But fortunately, it doesn't uh, jerk up quite as much as the old version did. Oh, another samurai. Where are these people coming from? Like, what... What alternate dimension has them existing there? Of course, I'll be spending my money on the uh, plasmid upgrades rather than on the two other uh, weapon upgrades there. So, this is what we came here to find. A little bit more Eve. I'm better already. And, uh. Ah! An audio log. You thought the whole ice sculpture fiasco was just gonna bounce off you, didn't you, Ryan? Well, you ain't made of rubber. You got your circus of values selling your goods. Security devices protecting your property. You think you own them, but you don't. I'm learning how to turn your creations against you. I promise you one thing. Machine gun bullets don't bounce. Alright, we got the reinforcements here again. So, let's bring in some of our own. Come on, you crazy asshole. Show him who's boss. Or I could. Damn. At least the shotgun isn't less powerful than it used to be. So. Let's see here. Yep, that's... That's a dude under the mask. 
as seriously just some crazy asshole in Japanese armor. It's not any sort of you know, automaton or anything. I I wish I knew his story. I really did. I really do. Sally's not your daughter. What's she to you? Why risk life and limb? It's part of the job. You owe me no explanation. She's just another orphan. After Fontaine went down, city was lousy with him. And? I don't know. You have a reason for every stupid thing you've ever done? She started showing up, looking peaked. More fool me to feed the brat. Should have known she would never leave. How did you lose her? It's none of your business. You guys were talking about this earlier. Did you forget? What the hell? It's like they wrote the dialogue at two different moments. Hmm. Nah, I don't think I used melee enough for this. But yeah, we're getting the backstory twice here, as if they didn't realize they were giving it twice. Kind of bugs me. Pretty big oversight considering how short the story here is. Yeah. Well, anyway. I guess we'll take the tram next time. Back when I was covering Deus Ex, I did a corner about drug epidemics, crack cocaine in particular. But now in Bioshock Infinite, drugs have come back in a big way, the splicers. The addiction, the uh, physical and mental declines, the desperation. So for today, we'll be heading to History Corner to discuss the origin of drugs and the history of opium in particular. Human Experimentation So you know how a lot of teenagers go through an experimental phase where they're willing to try just about anything no matter how dangerous or stupid? There's actually an evolutionary purpose for that. After all, you have to try new things if you want to find new plants and animals and figure out how to eat them. I mean, everyone's favorite thing to point to when asking who thought that was a good idea is milk. And yeah, it's kind of unnerving when you think about where milk comes from, but at the same time, parents nurse their children, cows nurse their calves, and... So I could see some herder putting two and two together, deciding to drink milk from cattle and goats. Even cheese makes a certain sense. It only forms in the presence of specific acids, or more often, an enzyme called a rennet, which you can only find in the stomachs of young cattle. But then, animals' stomachs and bladders were used to hold liquids all the time back in the day. All you'd need is for someone to store their milk in a calf's stomach, come back later to discover that it had curdled, decide to eat it anyway since they didn't have many alternatives, and then finally, they discover that it actually tastes pretty good this way. But then, what about wheat, corn, or rye? They aren't like fruits and nuts, where you can just pluck one off a tree and try it. They're grasses. All you have to do to rice is boil it to make it edible. And the same is true for modern sweet corn, but there's this whole complicated process you have to go through to get to the nutritious bits. And what about bread? The simplest recipe only needs flour, water, and heat. But to get that far demands a whole production line. However, you can make sense out of how this production came to be when you expand beyond the obvious connections to food and on into other things which we were using plants for. Spices and medicine. To make use of plants we use for these other purposes, you need a production. You need to cut the useful parts of the plant away from the useless and potentially poisonous parts. Much like how you need to avoid eating the leaves of a potato plant, because they are full of deadly nightshade poison. And back in the day, people unfortunately had to learn these things the hard way. But once it happened, the survivors were very careful about remembering what not to do afterwards. Anyway, once they had the useful bits, Humans would generally dry them out, much like how you dry out leather, 
grind them up in a stone bowl called a mortar, with a stick called a pestle, and then either sprinkle the results on their food to improve the flavor, or let them soak in hot water, creating a tea that's much easier to swallow than powder or flakes. These dried herbs might simply add a good smell to make the hot water drinkable, or it could hold medicinal properties. Some real, some imaginary. Alternately, you could grind up the herbs while they're wet, or add water to dry herbs to create a paste, perhaps as a sauce for a stew, or as a topical cream to rub directly on an injury. And guess what bread is? You start out by drying wheat and removing the chaff, grinding the grains into a powder, adding water to turn the powder into a paste, and then you bake the result in an oven, which you can create by simply setting a fire in an enclosed pile of rocks. So because early humans were experimenting with herbs and medicine, they invented bread. And because wheat and other grasses are so easy to grow, and you can get so much of it from just a limited plot of land, wheat, rice, and corn enabled the transition from meat-based hunting and gathering to grain-based sedentary farming. Poppies will make you sleepy. Opium poppies go through kind of an odd life cycle. They start by growing up into these big, beautiful flowers. Some even growing up to four feet in height and six inches in diameter, which is roughly 1.3 meters and 15 centimeters for our metric friends. But then, once they're pollinated, they close up into these massive seed pods. Like, it's, it's hard to believe that the stem has the structural integrity to hold them up. Opium poppies have a variety of uses, and there are a variety of cultivars which specialize in each use. There are opium poppies which are used for decoration. Opium poppy seeds are edible and are used in things like muffins and bagels. Oh, and if you cut the outside of an opium seed pod, it leaks a latex sap which you can dry and then smoke to get high. Opium has been in use by humans for thousands of years, if not longer. The cultivation of opium poppies was widespread throughout the Middle East and extended at least as far west as Greece and as far east as India. Medicinally, opium was used to treat asthma, since it relaxes your lung muscles, to relieve pain, and to improve eyesight. It was also used to get high and could be very addicting. But considering it had been around for thousands of years, societies with access to opium knew how to keep opium use from spiraling out of control. But in the 19th century, that started changing in a few different ways. By the 1800s, the UK had taken over enough of India to gain control of its opium fields, and they started mass exporting laudanum, which is really nothing more than opium dissolved in water or occasionally alcohol. It also started selling opium to local traders in Southeast and East Asia, traders who then sold it to Chinese merchants, a process which began to reverse a century-old trade imbalance between China and Britain, and also happened to spark a few wars and start a major drug epidemic which wouldn't end until after the communists took over in 1949 and confiscated and destroyed all of the opium by force. In 1804, Frederick Scherturner isolated the most potent alkaloid in opium, morphine. Since the morphine content of any given batch of opium could vary significantly, this ability to isolate it made it much more useful in medicine. Codeine, a significantly weaker and less common opiate, was isolated in 1832 by Pierre Robiquet. Incidentally, this opiate is so weak that it's used even today in over-the-counter painkillers and cough medicine. Morphine, however, is potent enough to be dangerous. It's a very effective painkiller but it's also very addictive, both in the sense of causing an addictive disorder and in the sense of carrying a physical dependency which is so potent that a sudden withdrawal can be life-threatening. Opioids affect the opioid receptors found in certain neurons, 
and these neurons are in fact named after the drug. And once the body grows tolerant of opioids, its ability to regulate itself without them significantly diminishes. Over the short term, this means a withdrawal period that produces a flu-like sickness for several days. And over the long term, this means a persistent craving that may go on for months or years. And that is entirely beside any sort of temptation associated with the addictive disorder. In fact, this craving is the reason why opioid addicts have such a high relapse rate. For most addiction, the chances of relapse range from 30 to 70 percent, depending on a list of factors, including the strength of the addiction, how ready the recovering addict is to change, and the level of support they're getting from family, friends, and professionals. But because of that craving, the relapse rate of recovering opioid addicts is somewhere above 90 percent. Now, fortunately, it is possible to control opioid cravings through the carefully monitored administration of opioids like methadone and buprenorphine, but the problem is that the prescriptions often don't last as long as the dependency, and a lot of people, even doctors, still think that using these drugs counts as enabling an addiction instead of easing the addict out of one. The Modern Approach in 1897, Felix Hoffmann, a chemist working for the German company Bayer, synthesized a compound known as diamorphine, which Bayer went on to market as heroin. Curiously, this was the second time diamorphine had been synthesized. The first occasion, it was performed by C. R. Adler Wright, an English chemist who never went on to commercialize it. Heroin was initially marketed as an improved version of morphine which didn't carry the same risk of addiction and dependence. Unfortunately, within about 10 years, people started to realize that heroin was actually more addicting than morphine. And as later opioids would prove, including drugs such as oxycodone and hydrocodone, which basically bridged the gap between codeine and morphine, opioid effectiveness and opioid dependence are directly related. Patent medicine makers actually made use of heroin along with morphine and cocaine to get people addicted to their products even as they failed to help with anything like they claimed on the bottle or in their advertisements. It's this sort of practice that led directly to the FDA and to strict regulations on ingredient lists and medical claims. While you can still get codeine over the counter, and every other opioid with a prescription, heroin is so powerful that its manufacture and sale within the United States was banned in the 1920s, and most other nations followed suit by the end of World War II. Humans need opioids. No other class of painkiller is nearly as effective. But as it turns out, heroin was a step too far, and by and large, nations only permit its use under very specific and controlled circumstances. Of course, heroin isn't even the most effective opioid out there. That would be fentanyl, first synthesized in 1959 by the Belgian Paul Janssen. Fentanyl and other drugs based on it are so potent that they're used less for pain relief and more for general anesthesia. And at the highest end, they can only really be used on large animals like elephants. On the streets, fentanyl drugs are sometimes mixed in with heroin to provide a stronger, more dangerous kick, and only rarely are they used on their own. Well, aside from in Estonia, which for some reason is the world's biggest recreational user of fentanyl. And that's despite the fact that fentanyl is so potent and so dangerous that more Estonians are dying today from fentanyl overdoses than from car accidents. Here in America, we've been facing an uptick of opioid addictions, largely thanks to Oxycontin. Oxycontin is a prescription painkiller that slowly releases a steady amount of oxycodone, uh, the semi-synthetic opioid first invented in 1960. We've known it was dangerous since at least the 1960s, but for whatever reason, it stayed in the background until 
OxyContin hit the pharmacy shelves in 1995. Possibly this uptick is thanks to the way Purdue, the manufacturer, aggressively marketed the drug. Or possibly it's because of the relatively large dosage. Since OxyContin is an extended release pill, it's got a lot of oxycodone in it. And if someone crushes the pill, they can get access to all of that oxycodone at once, or even inject it for a much more powerful high. From 2001 to 2014, the number of deaths from prescription opioid overdoses has gone from less than 6,000 to nearly 20,000, or around three times as many. In 2010, Purdue changed the pill's formula so that you can't crush it, and it no longer dissolves in water, making it much harder to abuse. At the same time, since you can't get rid of an opioid addiction just by getting rid of the opioid, deaths from heroin have spiked since 2010 from a relatively stable 2 to 4,000 per year to 2014's 11,000. Coincidence? No, not at all. The reformulation may help prevent future opioid addicts, but those who have already succumbed are looking elsewhere to get their fix. And black market heroin is a lot more dangerous than prescription pills. Opium and its derivatives are simultaneously some of the most helpful and the most dangerous drugs known to humankind. But that's the way it always goes, isn't it? What's most dangerous and what's most useful always seem to be one and the same things. I could rattle off a dozen different examples for you, but I don't really need to. Just look up from this video, right now, and you will see something that is exactly what I am talking about. Thanks for joining me again in History Corner, and I hope I'll see you soon.